Uh, I want to talk to you about data. I want to talk to you about your data. I want to talk to you about my data. I want to talk to you about our data, your company's data. Why? Because every day, three times per second, we produce a shit ton of data. Pretty much like that. In fact, as a result, information is largely considered to be the oil of the 21st century, and every company now is a tech company. Is there anybody here from CBRE, by the way? I can't really see with the lights. CBRE bills itself as a tech company that specializes in real estate, not a real estate company. And if you know anybody at CBRE, ask them. They get it. They totally get it. You're all tech companies now. And if you're not thinking that way, you're going to have problems in just a few years. So how much data are we really talking about? The math says it's six gigabytes per person per day, but that's across every person on the planet. And there's about a billion people on the planet who are not connected, maybe more, which means that that six gigabytes, it's really like 10 or 12 gigabytes. That's your digital footprint every day, day after day after day. And what's really interesting, at least in my opinion, is that the vast majority of your data, as much as 83%, 85% on average, is held by companies you don't even know. And they're monetizing it and laughing the whole way to the bank. Your data, what are you getting for it? I know what they're getting for it. What are you getting for it? One minute of one day. You heard about one day? How about one minute of one day? Fascinating. I don't know if you can see it because it's, it's pretty small, even on the big screen. Uh, so let me help you focus on the number that matters here. TikTok. How many people TikTok? Raise your hands. Do it. Own it. Be proud of it. I don't do it. So I'm not in that number. In fact, I'll just tell you a little story. I was, I was at a, uh, a restaurant in Minneapolis not too long ago, and I ordered a smoking Manhattan cocktail. And it came with a glass cover and all the smoke around it. And the waitress came over and immediately started to take off the cover. And I said, wait, wait, I have to get a picture. And she goes, it's not like you're going to TikTok it. And she was right. But I said, how do you know? And she said, let me see your phone. And I said, here. And she scrolls through all my apps. She's like, I told you you're not TikToking it. She was dead on. I'm not a TikToker, but that number is staggering. 167 million videos per minute per day. I mean, there's a lot of staggering numbers here, but that one's the big one. How is this possible? Well, Gordon Moore in 1965 said that computing power is going to double every 18 to 24 months. And as a result, price performance will be cut in half each time. Now that's happened close to 30 times. We're on the verge of 30 iterations. So for the first time in recorded history, we have a predictable exponential growth engine powering everything. Everything before 1965 effectively was linear. Everything after 1965, which by the way is a very good year, is the year I was born, exponential, okay? Anybody have that new iPhone? If you do, your new iPhone with a A15 Bionic chip can do 15.8 trillion, almost 16 trillion, trillion operations per second. What does it look like on a curve? Or what does it look like graphically? Here's a couple of, of exponential growth curves based on Moore's law. Uh, you can see what happens when it hits the knee of the curve, it shoots skyward with just one or two more iterations. But more importantly, the one on the left, what happens in the early years of something that's exponential? It behaves linearly, right? And it creates a lot of disappointment. How many people dismissed blockchain or AI, which we are going to talk about momentarily, as a yawner? A lot of us. I've talked a lot about it, and people go, it's not a thing. And I'm here to tell you, it is a thing. It's right about there, and it's about to shoot skyward. And I've got slides to back it up. Also, I just wanted to see where we were in the timeline of things, right? One or two more iterations of Moore's Law, and the world's been reinvented twice. It's why Internet of Things, connected networked devices, soared past the prediction of 50 billion devices. We're closing in on 200 million at this point. I'm sorry, 200 billion. It's why it took 50 years for the airlines to hit, I'm sorry, 68 years for the airlines to hit 50 million users. And it took Pokemon Go exactly 19 days. So my friend Peter Diamandis, and I recommend his books and follow him. He's XPRIZE, he's SpaceX with Elon Musk. He's a really smart guy. He says the only constant is change, but the rate of change is increasing. 
More importantly, or more to the point, Ray Kurzweil, his business partner in Singularity University says, we won't experience 100 years of progress in the next 100 years. It will be more like 20,000 years of progress, and that's at today's rate. So that's a low ball. Peter just said it's, it's increasing. So 20,000 years is probably more like 50,000 years. First time in history. What comes after Moore's law, by the way? Because uh, Ray talks about the law of accelerating returns. At some point, Moore's law becomes subatomic. It can't possibly produce a chip that's physically manageable at the subatomic size. When that happens, something more powerful, more exponential will drive us. Most will tell you it's quantum computing, but that's probably a presentation for a whole nother day. So back to the data. We're in the midst of the greatest wealth creation phase and the greatest wealth transfer phase in all of mankind, in all of history. So how do you get your fair share of that? How do you monetize your data? Let's talk about it. The first thing we're gonna talk about is blockchain. Blockchain is already changing the world. Let's talk about how and why. There are those that say everything will be tokenized, everything, and connected to a blockchain one day. I concur. There are those that say blockchain is poised to be bigger than the internet itself, which for me at least at one time was unthinkable because in my lifetime the internet was like the greatest thing to ever come along. I actually started work without the internet, without the phone, without the email, before fax machines, I hate to say it that way, before cell phones, before bagged cell phones, I was at work. And then the internet came and changed everything. And yet, blockchain is, blockchain is poised to be bigger still, and I concur. So what are the key concepts of blockchain? How many people have some sense of what it is, what the concepts are? So some hands, but, but maybe not that many. Well, a little few more. You're waking up now, this is good. Uh, it uses uh, coded cryptography uh, uh, to create a permanent digital ledger or record based on blo sequential blocks that are decentralized, they're distributed amongst the stakeholders, and only the stakeholders. So there's no center of trust, right? There's no central authority, there's no bank, if you will, in the middle, uh, using hashing authentication to create the ultimate layer of privacy and trust. It's also important to know it's a global data standard. It knows no geographical boundaries other than perhaps by regulation. It's also important to know that Bitcoin, Bitcoin and crypto and blockchain are similar but different. Most people think they're one and the same. Who knows which one came first, blockchain or Bitcoin? Anybody know? Most people think blockchain came first and Bitcoin was the first sort of killer app. And it's really the other way around. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as a concept was invented and then they actually needed the infrastructure and the mechanics to make it work. And so they invented blockchain. But I don't want to talk about crypto, I want to talk about the real estate applications for blockchain. I get this a lot, but wait, but wait, how does it really work? Let me just ask you, when you flip on a light switch in a room, do you really know how it works or are you just glad that it does? When you travel, to the JW Marriott Marquis in Miami, and you connect to Wi-Fi. Do you know how it really worked? Or are you just glad that it did? Because you had to get back to work. How about the internet itself? Could you describe to somebody the exchange of data packets globally in less than a second, in a nanosecond? Or are you just glad that it works? And I think blockchain is a, is a bit of that. So there's a little gif here that explains in very basic terms how it works. But to really get into it would be a different presentation with more time. Um, let's talk about what some of the real estate opportunities are. There's several here. There's several more that aren't here. I've highlighted just a few. Uh, tokenized ownership uh, is getting the most action in, in uh, blockchain for real estate right now. So I think you're going to see that where you can own a little token of a piece of real estate and trade it sort of like a share of stock. You want to own a piece of the Wills Tower in Chicago? Done. You want to sell it? Great, go sell it. It will be nearly instantaneous. Smart contracts, an if this, then that orientation. So you heard James mention I have an energy company. One of the things that we're rolling out in 2022, early 2022, are blockchain-based smart contracts to accelerate real-time payment. So I work on about a 60-day lag payment for my retail energy suppliers. I want that money now. So on blockchain smart contracts, I can set up an if this happens, then the payment is released smart contract. 
and accelerate that payment from 60 days to real time. It's a real good use case for it. Uh, supply chain, everybody's heard about how bad the supply chain is, and it is that bad. One of the great fixes for it could and should be blockchain and the ability to track every asset on the move in real time and the, the handoff and the transfer. That would do a ton to fix our supply chain issues. Data marketplaces, I work with this company called Byre, B-E-I dot R-E, and it's creating a series of blockchain-based data marketplaces to help you unlock the power of your data that we were just talking about, okay? What it is, is an authentication that you own the data that you wanna monetize. You might wanna sell it, I would tell you you wanna license it for an hour, a day, week, a year, forever, on your terms, not on my terms. We create a marketplace, we bring consumers of the data together with the data that you wanna to try to monetize, lease comps, how about lease comps? Right? Something along those lines. We get a micropayment, we facilitate the transaction, we database nothing, it's not our data. We don't have ownership rights to it. And blockchain, blockchain facilitates the whole thing. And if you can create that marketplace, you could create it for hotels, you could create it for hospitality, you could create it for cars, you could create it for anything. It really scales nicely. So it's an example of a blockchain-based data marketplace that's headed your way probably as soon as 2022, worst case, 2023. Lots of other uses. You've heard about the metaverse now, right? Brilliant marketing move by Facebook to change their name to Meta. And all of a sudden, the whole world knew what a metaverse was, right? Brilliant marketing. So here's some of the benefits. I think what it amounts to to me, if you can see this okay, sort of better risk management, more certainty, faster, and more complete. And you can apply those concepts to anything. It's really risk management at the end of the day. It makes too much sense not to be doing it, not to be using it. The ecosystem and the use cases are exploding. On the left is a, is a, is a, a graphic of the blockchain real estate ecosystem. On the right are just real world use cases and companies who are playing in that space. I know it's hard to see, but you can Google this stuff and find it. It's amazing. We've hit a tipping point. In fact, 2021 will go down as the year that blockchain hit that, that knee of that curve and shot skyward. Just look at the VC funding. So far, just through three quarters of 2021, VC investment in blockchain companies, real estate and other, is up 384%. That's just through September, okay? 2020 was three billion. We were 15 billion just through the first three quarters. So somebody sat up and took notice. No conversation today on blockchain could be complete without talking about ICOs, initial coin offerings, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, and distributed autonomous organization, DAOs. But to sit here and explain each one of those to you would take uh, a long minute uh, at best. So here's a couple of graphic representations. ICOs are sort of like uh, crowdsourcing uh, for companies uh, using um, tokens or, or, or Bitcoins uh, or some sort of crypto. Uh, NFTs um, right now are really um, unique digital collectibles that people are buying in hopes that they increase in value or simply because they just love them and they're that unique and they're into di digital everything. Uh, distributed autonomous organizations are organizations with no governance. Try to think about that for a minute. There's no CEO. There's no COO, there's no board of directors. It's controlled by the stakeholders, the people that are, are uh, participating in it. So an example of that is, is BlockDX or, or, or Dash. Um, there are even some DEOs that can f are programmed to form themselves with no hum human intervention at all. So try to think of, uh, I mean, it's not a really a robot, but um, a, a computer or computer code forming its own company, launching its own bank account, filing its own paperwork, and conducting its own business. It's an extreme example, but it's already here. It's all based on blockchain. Still not convinced? Let's just talk about what's happening in Miami. Just in Miami, which is a very uh, forward uh, blockchain and crypto-centric community. Miami just launched something with a, a not-for-profit company called City Coins called Miami Coin. In just the last three months. Anybody here from Miami? How many people are tracking this? So do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know how much they've raised? $19 million. 
of unscheduled income in their digital wallet by encouraging Bitcoin miners to share their Bitcoin mining with the city. So how's that for a new model of funding across big cities in America? New York's next, but I promise you, a year from now, if we have this conversation, most big cities in America will study this model and many will adopt it. It's not perfect. It has some legal challenges, right? Based on how uh, code and, and ordinance are written, but it sure fills a big need in most cities. How about the Miami Heat Arena, right? Just renamed to a cryptocurrency exchange called FTX. They now have the naming rights to the Miami Heat Arena. How about Mayor Suarez, who just got reelected? He's taking his 401k in Bitcoin, and now the New York mayor that just got elected is doing the same. How many people went to Art Basel here? I heard it's absolutely spectacular. Obviously, I missed it by a week or two. NFTs, non-fungible tokens, featured prominently along with the real world art that was on display there. Coinbase IPO this year, I got in on it. It's kind of tracking like, like Bitcoin pricing or crypto pricing. Crypto.com, naming rights to LA Staples Center, a lot of the F1 races. Anybody watch that F1 race last week? By the way, it was absolutely amazing, right? Tell me you've seen a better race than that. But you also, if you were watching the track, it had crypto.com all over the track, right? It's in the mainstream now. And it's not going backwards. Aaron Rodgers, many professional athletes are now saying, you know what? Just pay me in crypto. I don't want your money. That's all blockchain. There's even a country called Liberland. Anybody heard of Liberland? So I got a passport to Liberland. It's a real country. It was just founded a couple years ago. It cost about $100. It's sandwiched between uh, Croatia and Serbia in an unclaimed piece of land or a disputed piece of land. But 100% of what takes place there is rooted in blockchain, 100%. It's considered to be one of the great experiments in recent memory, maybe ever. So if you want to check out blockchain and how it works, go visit Liberland. So where's it going? Well, we're certainly in that growth phase now. It's gonna hit maturity in just a few more years. It's hard to predict with accuracy which, which year, but it's before the end of your next 10-year lease. I can promise you that. Um, where's it go from there? Um, these are not uh, universally accepted concept, comment, uh, concepts, uh, but a lot of people think we're headed to a sort of a national blockchain-based identity that will take you from birth to death. So try to imagine if you're having kids in the future, your kids are having ki kids in the future, and they're assigned um, a blockchain-based identity as opposed to a social security number, and that's what tracks them through life. Uh, medical, how many times have you gone to a doctor's office and filled out the clipboard? And then you go to a different doctor and you have to fill out the clipboard again, right? Anybody had that experience? Yes, we've all had that experience, I think. It's terrible, I think. Why not carry your information with you on the blockchain and give access to it to the doctor if you deem the doctor and his or her team to be a stakeholder in the discussion? And you never have to fill it out again. Identity of things, um, 200 million things on the, on the internet of things could all have a blockchain identity. Um, Web 3.0, has anybody heard of that? That's well underway at this point. That's a more organized internet around this massive trove of data using blockchain as the backbone. That's probably where it's headed. Uh, Tim Draper says, Bitcoin and therefore blockchain, one of the greatest technical advances humanity has ever seen. I'll leave it there for now. I want to move on to artificial intelligence. This is a creepy... GIF, if you have me, by the way. That's Google's eye in the sky. The eye in the sky never lies. So um, the CEO of Alphabet says AI is one of the most important things humanity's working on. It's more profound than, gee, I don't know, something like electricity or fire. Could you imagine where we would be in the world without electricity or without fire? One day soon, we're going to have the same sentiment about AI. Unthinkable. Um, I don't know if anybody knows James Whitaker, but he's a really interesting character. He's a professional speaker now. He used to be the lead engineer at Google and Microsoft on their browsers. So you have him to thank, him and his team, to thank for Microsoft Explorer and for Google Chrome. And I met him a little bit before COVID uh, at a real estate conference, and we were sitting at a table, and we're all arguing about the, the greatest disruptive technologies. And we're talking about automation and robotics and EVs and, and all the stuff you would expect we're talking about. And he's just sitting over there being quiet. And all of a sudden, he, he wakes up and he goes, you're all out of your effing minds. 
it's all about AI. AI and everything else. Everything else falls in line under AI. And it really made, I remember it, it really made an impression upon all of us. Uh, so here's what he said, mark my words. When it comes to disruptive tech, there's really only one thing to talk about, and it's AI. Everything else falls in line under that. Here's what Eli Musk has to say about it in his own words. It's really quite close to, very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI, and it scares the hell out of me. It's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows and the rate of improvement is exponential. There's that word exponential again, right? So, uh, if you watch the graphic on the right, you will see that AI will contribute as much as $16 trillion to global GDP by 2030, which means it is the largest, fastest growing market in the entire world, all before the end of your next 10-year lease. Uh, how many people know Sophia? This is the most advanced form of AI so far put out onto the earth. Uh, she's actually been granted citizenship in Saudi Arabia. Um, I encourage you to Google her and, and see some of the videos, or maybe you've seen her on TV. She does a lot of interviews. Um, none of it's scripted. Uh, it, it's fascinating to see Sophia interact with the real world using AI as the driver. Um, in real estate, it's everywhere. It's already everywhere. Um, the vaccine, that was rushed to the market, how did they get it right so fast? And I know this is a controversial topic and not everybody will agree on it. They modeled it with AI and they narrowed down hundreds if not thousands of possible fixes before AI led them down the path of, path of mRNA. And that's how we got it done so fast. So it really had a big hand in fewer deaths in COVID, believe it or not. Digital twins coming our way, I mean, so many things here. Um, improved forecasting, it's a good way to look at it. Um, here's the AI 100, again, I know it's too small to read, but uh, the space is being filled daily by new players. Uh, Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google says, AI will lead to breakthroughs in everything, everywhere, every industry in the next 10 years, transforming how we use energy, how we treat disease, how we combat climate change. It will become crystal clear in 2022, and the last I checked, it's December of 2021. Are there X factors? You bet. Cyber, cyber security, cyber crime, that's a big one. Um, how about 5G and GPS and the satellite network? What if somebody took out our satellite network? Where would we be? That's a big X factor in my book. How about when Gen Z and Gen A come of age? What's their attitude? What's their spending power? Are they decision makers? Are they in politics? Are they making the rules? What do they have to say about it? How about data accuracy or the truth economy, as some people call it? Back in the day, we only had three sources of truth, ABC, CBS, and NBC. That's all there really was, right? Now, there's thousands, and they all have the shade of truth that you like, which is why you go there. But if you feed shades of truth into AI, it's only gonna be as good as the data that goes into it. This is a big X factor. How about the pace of change? We could do all this now, but is the business world, is the social realm, is the political world ready for this? Or do we keep electing people who really don't know the concepts or understand the concepts and cannot lead us with policy? I'm not taking sides, I'm just saying, right? So Bill Gates really got it right. When's this happening? Well, probably more than two years and probably less than 10. And I think he's gonna be spot on in this case. Uh, what can you do about it? A lot. Jump in. Pick one thing, self-educate, go deep. There's lots of resources. Spend five extra minutes Googling instead of watching ESPN or whatever, or, or binging on Netflix, which is what my wife and I do. Um, here's your new reality. This is the smart city. We're all participating in it in some way. That's why we're all here. It's going to have a foundation of blockchain and an overlay of AI, and it's going to drive your ability to unlock your data and achieve a level of monetization that you hadn't previously been thinking of or working towards, at least I hope so. So with that, I'll close it out. You have to get to the future ahead of your customers. Be ready to greet them when they arrive. I think that really sums it up nicely. With that, I say let's go to work. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about all this.